Tonight, we have something completely different. We often bring you crime stories that are already solved, but this is a case where you could still make a big difference. Let's call it a story of sex, lies, and videotape, and perhaps the false sense of security we all have when we check into a hotel. We assume that because there are guards and surveillance cameras, it is safe. But can those Big Brother cameras capture every little hidden detail? What dangers can happen when they miss something? Something that leads to a deserted road in the dark of the night. It is a quiet, lonely place, a speck of grassy land around an undeveloped cul-de-sac on the outskirts of Miami. There's a no dumping sign in plain view, but on the morning of February 21st, 2005, a utility worker passing by saw that someone had ignored it in a big way. Curled up in the grass was a woman, naked, unconscious, and beaten within an inch of her life. The woman was airlifted to Jackson Memorial Hospital's Ryder Trauma Center in critical condition. What did it look like the intention was of whatever was done to her? Oh, she was dumped out and left for dead. Miami-Dade detective Alan Foote caught the case. Boy, I've got a Jane Doe on my hands. Uh, I saw her at the hospital just lying there. Uh, we've got no identification. At the crime scene, one potential clue. Now over in this area here, this is all weeded up and everything, but there was a, there was a blanket. Police have the blanket tested for trace evidence. It turns up nothing. They also canvass the houses nearby. Try to see if uh, anybody noticed anything, and of course, we got no response there. I didn't see anything or heard anything. As the news spreads. There's no clothing, there's no um, license or anything that would distinguish who she is. The mystery deepens. The hospital phone is ringing. Strangers are asking questions. Unidentified persons. Uh, inquiring about this uh, young woman that was airlifted to the hospital and without identifying themselves, so that was kind of suspicious. The victim remains unconscious until the following day. Then the darkness recedes. I woke up. I, um, I had a lot of pain. I remember somebody asked me what was my name. I get a phone call telling me that she's written some things down on a piece of paper. The mystery woman still can't speak, but she scrawled out some basic information. Her name is Ina Budnitska. She's from Ukraine, and she works for one of the many cruise lines that operate in Miami. I wanted to have an occupation in my life. I want to be someone. That all makes sense, but what about this? One of the things she writes down is my attorney's name is this, and a phone number. Now that's a little unusual, right? That the victim comes to and one of the first things she does is say, this is who my lawyer is? Yeah, it was very, uh, very unusual. What kind of suspicion does that spark? I didn't know. Was she into something uh, criminal? Uh, what kind of lawyer is he to start with? Maybe they thought it was unusual that someone would ask for an attorney, but uh, this woman had a horrific assault and probably was reaching for anything that she could. Here's her story. Ina had been injured on the ship and had filed suit against the cruise line. That's why she had an attorney. Yes, I didn't know nobody. I have a salon up here. So the, first, the only one person who I knew, that was my attorney, that was my lawyer. That's While she was rehabbing, Ina was being housed by the cruise line at this hotel, the airport Regency. It's about 10 miles east of the cul-de-sac where she was found. The hotel would prove crucial to the mystery especially its sophisticated security system. We have 16 cameras covering the whole uh, perimeter of the hotel, including parking lot, the entrance, the exits, the lobby, the restaurant, the lobby bar, the front desk, the back exits. Those uh, cameras have a motion sensor detector. And then we have uh, two security guards at night and on duty. So we can see, uh, you know, anybody or anything that happens in the, in the perimeter of the hotel. For privacy reasons, the hotel does not have cameras in the elevators or upstairs hallways. That would make a big difference later. But for now, Detective Foote has this pile of DVDs from the first floor cameras to work through. So he starts to scan those recordings for any evidence of the crime. Now, where's the guard shack? Up here? It's here. 
Meanwhile, back at the hospital, Ina was eventually able to give a coherent statement about her activities on the night of the attack. She said she'd gone out with a friend that night to a restaurant in Coconut Grove. I had fun. Uh, we stayed there a while, had some drinks. She says she returned by taxi by herself shortly after midnight. But check this out. The security cameras catch her leaving again at 3.33 a.m. That's her in the red jacket. She returns seven minutes later at 3.40. Why is she coming in and out of this hotel so much at such weird hours? I mean, she could explain that. Ina says she went to the gas station across the street to buy a phone card. She wanted to call her mother back in Ukraine, which is seven hours ahead. I'm very close with my mother. And uh, I used to call her very often back in Ukraine. But here's where the case really turns into a mystery which could stump Sherlock Holmes. After returning from her errand, Ina walks to the lobby elevators at 3.41 a.m. and is never seen by the hotel cameras again. It's the last we see of her. So that's how we believe she was attacked in the hotel. The next thing Ina remembers is regaining consciousness for a brief moment at the cul-de-sac, where she was discovered at 8.30 that morning. It was very cold. If I remember, it was like very, very cold and dark and cold. I couldn't stand up and I could not walk. But everything that happened in between the elevator and the cul-de-sac is a total blank. The memory was not clear because um, I was in pain, in too much pain. My head was not working, absolutely. I was in shock. But for all the things that had investigators scratching their heads, the biggest problem was still the simplest. How did the victim get out of this hotel? And you couldn't answer that? Couldn't answer that. The so cops are so confounded, the they even the inspect the landscaping yeah, below be Ina's fourth-story balcony on the off chance she might have been lowered or dropped from there. And you even checked the body for signs of rope burns, right, to see if she had been lowered down on something and showed some stress on her body. That's correct, and we didn't find any of that.